It went live on your page. Good morning. We're only five minutes late, but actually we weren't late because we went on two to, minutes. We went on to my personal page for a minute. Did we delete that one? Or uh huh, we deleted it. Oh, you're good. You're on it. Well, good so morning. good that I went on your own page. Listen, I'm telling you, but today, you didn't miss anything. We were actually having discussions about Tara's um, beautiful uh, hi. Oh, you earrings. can see them. You see my earrings as I'm setting up our. But thank you for this hopping is... on to Barn 45 from my homepage. Um, it's been one of those mornings we were saying that I didn't realize that you came in late too because I literally came in three minutes ago. And uh, you were saying that you came in late and um, we had a little car accident in my house um, just a little bit before I had to be here. So, yep. Um, just one of, those, one of those mornings. It's Ooh. called, like I said to you, it's just called life. It's called this life. is real. This is for reals. You know what though? This is real. We're here. We're here and we're ready to be in the word. We are ready. Are you guys ready? Because this is going to be. Yeah, we can't waste any time. This is going to be good because we have a lot to talk about. Okay, this one verse before. Okay, first of all, I the hope. most important part. If way you to have, start. I know it. If you have people that you know that come and join you, but they wait a little bit, can you get them to hop on like now? Because we have some announcements that we really want to share with y'all. I mean, they're not like. Joy's you know, not blow pregnant. your mind. I mean, she's yeah. not pregnant or anything. <laughs> I have something to tell you. That would be a scare. Everyone's like, we scared out of my... No, but it is, it is important information. But there's also, a hint. There's a hint. It is a hint. Yes, there's a hint. Uh, but also, uh, this scripture verse for today... Oh, I felt like such a Bible nerd last night when I was studying for this. I, my husband was nearby. I go, I got to show you something that God just revealed to me. I talk about getting below the surface and revealing a mystery that I had never seen. I had never seen this in the Word of God before. I can't wait. It's going to be good. And then you come in and you tell me the same thing. I'm like, what? This is okay, Lord. Press pause on this amazing I don't hour. remember saying that. Because I, I can't oh. wait. I can't wait. It's something else. But anyway. Oh, Okay, let's get into gosh. announcements. Let's get into announcements. I feel like Oprah, but we're not giving <laughs> anything away. But I do. I feel like this is a mini little Christmas season. It's true. Okay. Go ahead, Joy. No. What? <laughs> Okay, listen, we've got to jump in. Let's start with this. I'll start with the 30-day journey. It is October 1st. Yes, it is. So that means our September, read the Bible, spend time with the Lord every single day. Don't miss a day challenge is over. Hmm. So number one, did you like it? How did you do, like, what revelations did you have? Have conversation. We want to check in with you. How did it go? And it's not over. Because we had lots of messages about, is this going to end? How are you guys going to move forward? What are we going to do? Can you, don't close up the group. Are you going to close up the group? No, we're not going to close up the group. We might have to rename it, but this is like a group of 600 something people around the world. And you felt like you have this mini community mm -hmm. where you can be real and raw and talk about scripture in a safe platform, so we in a safe space, so we are not taking down the 30 day journey, Yay. the 30 day challenge. Um, we're so excited that you guys loved it. We'd love to hear your comments and, and what you got from it because what we were told and what we see, I just want everyone to be able to be um, aware of uh, the breakthroughs and the connectedness yeah. with our Heavenly Father because of the challenge. That's what's happening. People are being yeah. transformed by the challenge. People are actually having a community where they feel safe yes. and they're learning from one another and learning so the good. aha moments. Um, I, I just, I'm in awe of that I community in and how close-knit they are. So it's really yeah. good that we can all have this study together, but then it gives everyone an opportunity to go mingle with each other you know, virtually and um, it's go, super deep, go even important. deeper because we don't get that community that we once had weekly I know, here, I know. but now it's live or now it's and, yeah, on the internet change. and it's around the world. So God does not let quarantine stop our loving, safe community that is just covered in love by God. We'll okay. It. So it's, okay, it's continuing. continuing. Okay. What's the other big announcement? Um, let's announce tomorrow. Friday. Do you do that? So tomorrow uh, is Friday, and normally we have everyone that lives in our area or who doesn't live in our area but wants to make the field trip here. Um, generally, we have you come out here. We have a live studio audience. Tomorrow is supposed to be very cold, and so um, what we are, we looked into the restrictions. We looked to what we're allowed, mm -hmm. and are we saying 20? 
20 on the main floor, five on the top floor. Okay, so 25 total. 25 total. So we're, uh, we're allowed to have 25 people inside the barn. It's gonna be warm. It's gonna smell good. We're gonna have some candles lit. Okay, but unfortunately, we can only have 25 yeah. people tomorrow morning. So what Tara has done, um, she's so she's so technologically no, I'm smart. really not, but I do it. But you figure it out. Girl. I figure it out. So right. she, if you get onto our website, which is barn45.org, you'll see that you can sign up. So the first 25 people to sign up um, for mm -hmm. tomorrow morning to be here. It's called Seats and Swords. Oh, is that what you? Oh, yeah. I, it's not Battle really Slade. that anymore because you don't have to bring your own lawn chair. Well, not even in here. I don't think so because we'll wipe them down. And what do you want to do? Do you want to have them bring their own lawn chair? If you're chair? more comfortable in your lawn chair, sometimes those lawn chairs, they give them more space. Oh, yeah. But we they have, are maybe but more we comfortable. Have, we do have chairs. You're so Seats right. and Swords, we're going to keep it that name. Yeah. And we have our own folding chairs that are padded but might not be as comfortable as your lawn chair. Good point. Yeah. So um, go on to barn45.org, uh, and then it'll let them know if they're like unfortunately 26 to 27. And it'll um, it'll push you over to a waiting list. Okay. But only 25 can come on Fridays from now on because yeah. it's all indoor, and we're gonna have the doors closed. So, um, yep. So sign up. First come, first serve. We hate that, but we have to follow the I regulations. Know. I know, but it's going to be so fun to see 25 people inside the barn. It I is. am so excited about that. So thank you ahead of time for for even wanting to come out here and, and start your morning with us tomorrow morning. And as always, we'll be live with you as well here on um, on this beautiful little phone we have right now. That's right. Um, and then uh, number three. Go for it, girl. <laughs> this is the one she is so excited about. <laughs> okay. Y'all have wanted Barn 45 shirts. They're yours to buy officially. Go on to barn45.org. We have these long sleeve shirts, all different colors. And we have short sleeve shirts. We have hoodies. We have soft t-shirts. We got hats. Normal we have some cute hats. And we 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 do Water have bottle. we really I really wanted the camel hat because you you when you wear hat. your camel you're like I I'm mm. I'm in God's army so we really wanted we got a white camel hat we got a typical green army hat camel hat um, so and great these shirts for and, men and women and, boys and girls yep and this is the thing too um, we went with this with uh, this one, our new friend Michelle and her product is really good yeah. I mean the prices aren't cheap cheap but they're reasonable but the reason they're not like crazy cheap like five dollars there are ten dollar t-shirts right mm, fifteen dollar t-shirts or something like but that but the material is really good we've talked like, about this material really good so good super soft high quality yeah and listen we don't need to sell it because we know our community wants just to be that much more um, you know connected to each other and we love barn 45 and yeah so the prices are because we're going with a company and they do all the high quality work they do all the customer service and shipping and handling shipping and handling and everything so it is through her company but you go to barn 45.org to sign up for the swag and where do they find that barn 45.org no but where do they find the swag i couldn't, I couldn't. under under programs Pro like it's all under, under programs. programs but if you just keep scrolling down where it. seats and swords and our study is and and signing up for everything is under programs even well we'll get into that in a minute but uh what okay so the coolest thing why we love michelle's company is because we're adding the hashtags on the shirts. If you want them. If you want them. You get to choose which one you want. So there's Barn 45, two different types of emblems. She's chosen that for us. And then there's the hashtag on the sleeve. It's super cute, like Bible nerd. Mm -hmm. Some of them have to be chosen for you, but there are some that you get to choose your favorite hashtags. And we'll just kind of check it out and see how it's going. But we added like, um, it's cute. so excited. And bye. bye, bye is a hashtag, oh. and I dare not. Oh yeah, I dare not. So there's a lot of hashtags in our community that we love, and um, under new products. No, it's under um, programs. Programs. Okay, it's not a program, but it's just come on. It's the two of us here, but we are Barn Forty Five. So. Um, uh, yeah, so just keep going to barn45.org. Everything we're talking about is there. It's not a program, but it's how you get your stuff. And then the mugs. Oh, the mugs. The mugs are special to us. Yeah. 
you show them? Yeah. So Actually, this is the mug that you all have been wanting we're to buy. So barn forty five today. It's like, and I know, I know, but they have been wanting this so I know. badly. And because it is, it's my favorite mug. It is a good mug. Yes, we are not all about like this. Is nothing more than just trying very hard to get you what you've been asking for. So yeah. this mug doesn't go through the company. So it's a mm -hmm. whole different sign up, and we'll be selling them um, here. But you go to barn forty five dot org, specially just for a mug. Yeah. And then we'll mail it out to you. So only, and it will say mug separate. You'll see it when you go online. Okay. Okay. So that was a lot of announcements. We are excited. Truly, let's get down to, the, to why this is exciting. Yes, it's great that we get to have this community on in our comfy clothes. That's amazing. Yeah. Yes, we get to feel connected with our Barn 45 mug and all that. This is not about us. This right. is about honoring how much people have been asking about this stuff because yeah. they really do feel connected to God. Yeah. This is what it's all about. But what is, um, what's really an exciting thing is that you guys are, are always sharing with us your hopes and your needs and what you're excited for. And uh, this has just been the most amazing. This is Abby. Abby started this whole clothes, you know, you know line and, and just how excited she is to, to um, uh, show her appreciation. So we are so excited that the word of God truly has reverberated around the world. Mm -hmm. And it just so happens to be under the commission that he put on you and Jamie to have such a location. Mm -hmm. So we are so grateful. This all is a reflection of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's all we want. We want to reflect the love of Jesus. And if we get to do it on some cute clothes and on some uh, nice warm cup of coffee or a you know water bottle, it's all showing the love of Jesus. And we're so excited that this community is so tight around the world. This and is unbelievable. One of my favorite things about the um, the actual yeah you know logo is that there's that big cross that because the 45 degree angle just reminds us and everyone else that we're just to be a reflection of God's love. And um, also the cross. I just feel like it's not, you're not wearing Barn 45 stuff. We don't want you to wear just Barn 45 stuff. Barn 45, the name means yeah. nothing. But, but, but what it represents um, and who it represents is everything. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's why I think we feel so strongly about it. Plus, plus it's a way if, if you feel like, gosh, how do I, do, how do I want to give back a little bit? How do I donate? This would be just a fun way too if you want to just yeah. buy your next door neighbor a t-shirt. You know, the bar makes a couple bucks off of it and it goes back into you, goes Ooh, back into the sure Bibles does. and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So none of it's wasted. It's always for a good, good cause. I just want you all to know that. But um, I really think we should get Let's into uh, today's scripture. As we are trucking along in Second Timothy, I am, um, I, I am, I am doing life today, and I'm literally um, just coming off of a minor car accident at my house with a couple people in my home, and uh, I'm still feeling like my yeah. heart rate is up, and I'm a little bit like. We had a lot going on today, and um, I'm so grateful for the opportunity to um, be doing life like you all are doing, and then go. You know what? I get to pause. I get to rest. Mm -hmm. I get to let God's word just wash over me and to restore me and to give me some joy and peace that cannot come any other way. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm so grateful so to joy. be here today and just let my heart beat and my heart rate just go down a little bit as we get deeper and deeper into his word because that's mm -hmm. what he does. Mm -hmm. And uh, so thank you, each one of you, all of you. Uh, for being here, mm -hmm. for choosing to start your morning, um, not just with us, but in his word yeah. um, with us. So it's good stuff. This is real life. It's, 8 a.m. It's real life stuff. Or and, midnight, wherever you are. And at school day, too. So it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's called life. It's mm -hmm. called life. And um, we bring it to him. Yeah. We bring it to him. So. Exactly. So can I pray? And then we're going to get right that. in. I would love okay, y'all, you ready? Mm -hmm. Let's get, let's just uh, bring our surrendered uh, hearts mm -hmm. to him right now. And just have that heart posture. Look at that victory, man. And just have that same same pose within mm -hmm. our heart. So Father, thank yeah. you for every single person that you are drawing on here this morning. Um, Father, I'm overwhelmed by how much you love each one of them, each one of us, how much you love Tara. And Father, thank you for that love. Thank you for that love that gives us life, that gives us uh, a deeper knowing um, <clears throat> into our calling, into our purpose of being here, Lord God. And uh, Father, we're going to be diving into different aspects in your word this morning, but Father, I know one of them is um, that you gave me is forgiveness and the power of forgiveness. And, and Father, I, uh, I thank you for that gift of you, you, Jesus, dying on the cross 
You, you gave us life. You gave us wholeness. You gave us freedom. You gave us joy. You gave us purpose. You gave us a shameless lifestyle, Lord God, a heart condition um, that can just dance, dance in, in your presence freely um, because you forgave undeservingly. And um, Father, every person that has received <clears throat> you as their Lord and Savior, um, Father, I just pray right now that they hear you uh, whisper deep into their soul that they are your masterpiece because sometimes we just don't feel like a masterpiece sometimes we do truly feel like a hot mess and um, as Tara told me this morning well I'm a messy masterpiece mm -hmm. and I truly am too Lord God and yet um, it's in that masterpiece that you you tell us we are, that we are to you in your word that um, every masterpiece every artwork Lord God has its signature of the one who made it and so when we go out into this world your signature is on mm -hmm. our lives your signature is on our heart your signature cannot leave us. As, as, wrong, as wrong as we think we're going to get it, as, as messy as our life will be, as deep and dark as the circumstances are, as, as much as we dug ourselves back into a yet another pit, as, 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 you know, as what, whatever life wants to throw our way, uh, your, your signature can never leave your masterpiece. And so, Father, thank you for that. Thank you for the beauty in that. Thank you for the truth in that. Father, I'm desperate for you this morning and every morning. Allow each one of us to experience your love more than we knew it yesterday. And let that continue every single day until we're face to face with you one day in perfect harmony, in your perfect um, presence. Mm. We love you. We praise you. And Jesus, we give you and only you glory because you alone are on the throne of our heart. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I'm ready, girl. I'm like, I know. I'm Let's so ready for his in. word. I love how dependable it is, even if you've had the morning you've had. I know. That it's so dependable. I know. All of this shaking, but he can he can be the calm in the storm. That's he right. is the calm in the storm. That's so right. let's dive into Second Timothy chapter four, verse. We're sixteen. <laughs> 16. Yes, <laughs> sixteen. We are reading from the NLT, oh. but God, Jesus Christ, actually the Holy Spirit is the one who does the translation. We are just coming to you from our personal Bible time, what God said to us. So I hope that whatever we say penetrates your heart just as God wants it to. Yes. But if he has something different, if he has something more in addition to, Ooh, that's even sweet. better. Sweet. Yes. This is not about us. This is about us showing you our personal time with the Lord and what we got out of it. And what I truly believe that he wants you to receive. I really believe that. It is what we get out of it. But I feel like so much of it is... I want you to share this. I know who I brought there today. That's I, right. They need to hear this word. And like you said yesterday, I think it was, um, that it would almost be tailored fit for every single person. So the person next to you, you know, not, not really next to you, but yeah. the person next to you right now, above you or you know, beneath you. In Haiti. They might hear something. Yeah, in Haiti. Your next door neighbor. Yeah. They might hear something that, that you didn't even take from today. And I just love the way that God does that. You know, I can have people come up to it after I give a message and they'll say, I love that you said this and this. Such I'm and like, so, yeah. I never said that. Yes. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for taking over and being mm -hmm. the true teacher here. So, uh, Tara, do you want to read it? Do you want me to read it? How do you want to go about it? Um, go ahead and start. Okay, so 2 Timothy 4.16 is what we are in. Uh, those of you that are new today, welcome. We're so grateful to have you. Uh, this is uh, Paul. He is, he is uh, at the end of his life. Mm -hmm. He's about to depart and go to heaven because of his commitment to Jesus Christ. He is in a Rome prison. They're about to behead him. And he is writing his last um, words to his mentee, Timothy, who he adores. He's a young pastor in, in Ephesus. I think we all know that story by now, but some of us are new to this, so I just wanted to put that out there. Mm -hmm. um, and so 2 Timothy says this, 4.16, and this is Paul saying, The first time I was brought before the judge, Timothy, no one came with me. Mm. Everyone. It's interesting he uses no one and everyone. No. Everyone abandoned mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. But may it not be counted against them. I found this so precious. <sighs> mm. Just preach it, Joy. Go, girl. Well, that one, do you want me to go? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, that one I had to sit on for a little while. Like, why would he, he, he was rejected. Uh, he was left alone by everyone. Not just some people, but by everyone. 
Good timing on our, uh, That's the other thing. <laughs> We're having our lawn cut right now. It never, ever is cut at 8 a.m. Never. That's, it's been an interesting morning. Mm -hmm. That just tells me there's, you bet, we, we right. really got to lean in today. Lean in because the distractions oh are hilariously, this is hilarious. The car accident is hilarious, but this is the way the enemy is. This is the spiritual realm where if you're really paying attention, instead of getting aggravated, you look at it and you're like, and we're gonna laugh. You don't want us to you don't want us to be focused. So here we go. Okay, so well my first my first has my first question was, okay, so Paul is is, is intentionally choosing um, forgiveness over bitterness. Yes. And I'm like, what is that? Yes. He's choosing forgiveness over bitterness, Lord. What is that? Let me look into that more. And so I started just to read over and over and over again those last words. May it not be counted mm -hmm. against them. And I'm like, those, those words sound so familiar to me. This is where I got real Bible nerdish. And I cannot wait to share this with you all. I hope it comes out the way that he put it on my heart. But may it not be counted against him. That's when it drew my heart back to one of uh, one of my favorite people in the Word of God. Everyone's my favorite person, but his name was Stephen, and this man was on fire. It was, it was it's in Acts. Uh, if you want to read about him, it's in Acts seven, I believe, and um, he was on fire for Jesus, right? And so much so that the Pharisees, the religious people, all the council, they got together with Stephen and they started asking him questions, like you know, just um, interrogating him basically. And uh, he starts to tell everything from the very beginning of Genesis all the way leading up to Jesus of why Jesus truly is the Messiah. And they became so angry with him. But as he's talking, Tara, Stephen's face, it says, I love this, it says that it lit up like a, like a flashlight. It, mm. He actually had the light of God like oozing out of them. You're like, what is this light? The same light that Moses mm. had, if you find out in the Old Testament, that Moses had after he left um, time with God, his face lit because God is light. So if you're right now, when you go into places and you go into the grocery store and you go into the bank and you go into your job and you go into the barn, we literally have a face that is lit up because of the Jesus mm. who is in us. Yes. And so they just got to see into the spiritual realm. God allowed these people to see that his face lit up. <laughs> but my point on this is that they became so angry that they started to um, mob him and they all pick, they took him out of the city, mm. dragging Stephen and they began to stone him, not just stone him, but stone him to death. Mm -hmm. And they're all picking up boulders. And I, I don't, I can't watch that stuff even on like a main, main like a movie. That's just 2020 or something. But, <laughs> but a movie. Uh, and I can only imagine what that must have been like to witness Stephen being stoned to death and his body becoming deformed and um, manipulated and wounded in such aggressive way where he's he's dying because of the wounds mm -hmm. that are being occurred because of these rocks and and uh it says here that he said i'm going to give my spirit over to you god and then the minute before he passed away this is what stephen said um lord don't charge them with this sin yes. and with that it said he died and then the sentence after that says this Something along the line says this, that Paul, who was formerly known as Saul, was front row witness to it all, giving the authority mm -hmm. to stone Stephen because Saul hated Christians, which is Paul, who's writing this letter today in 2 Timothy. Is this all making sense? Yes. He hated Christians. So he was the one that was giving the authority to, yes, kill this man, and yes, I'm going to stand back and I'm wow. going to watch it. Wow. And he was the one that heard it probably more than anybody else wow. of Stephen say, Lord, don't charge Saul with this sin. Wow. Saul must have walked away. Paul, who wrote the letter today, who's now an on fire Christian, must wow. have walked away. I can only imagine every night at 2, 3, 4 in the morning, he could not go to sleep going, I just watched his body become, I don't even have a word for it because of this type of hatred that we did to him. And he told me, may mm -hmm. I not be kept. I've never ever heard in my life mm. of somebody who could forgive me for that. Mm. And then this is what I found most fascinating. Mm. The next time we hear about Saul, which is just one page over, it happens to be the very time that he is on the road to Damascus. Oh, really? Really. This is from my Bible nerd. I was like, wow, what? So just, just take that in for a minute. 
stay with me because oh, I'm trying to wrap my head my around goodness. this. Okay. okay. So on the road, the reason he was going to Damascus is because after Stephen was was stoned, and he re, he heard that he, of this crazy forgiveness that this man that he just stoned was going to give him, it angered him. He didn't know what to do with it. So he took his anger and he went to he went to the officials and said, "I I am so angry. We got to get every Christian there is. Let me go to Damascus and go to the churches and every Damascus and all the synagogues and let them know that they need." to imprison these Christians and bring them back to me so I can do something with them, right? He's, that angered him, this type of forgiveness. And it was that type of forgiveness, that threshold that, that he had to walk through that postured mm. and presented his heart ready to receive mm. the very tangible touch, the very presence that he could see with his eyes of Jesus himself. He heard Jesus' voice. Could it be, mm. could it just be, and this is where I was sitting last night, could it be that it's forgiveness yes. that is the very doorway into allowing the lost to be found? That is allowing the very one that has wandered off, the one who's refusing to accept Jesus, the one who's hurting us, the one who's wounding us. Could it be that the very ingredient is not just praying for them and I'm not going to forgive them, but truly forgiving them this make no sense, undeserved grace? Wow that then allows them to finally be able to hear the very voice of God the way that Paul did. Hmm. Um, wow. And then that was Acts 9, if you're wondering that one's from. And then, okay, then I took it one step further. And Acts then I, 9 or Acts 7? Nine, oh, Acts 7 is Stephen's thing. And then Acts 9 is when uh, Damascus Oh, happens. Damascus, yeah. okay. And then I'm like, okay, I still have heard that somewhere else. I still have heard that on someone's deathbed, they have said, may it not be counted against them. Wait, Lord, where have I heard that? Where have I heard that? And then all of a sudden I remembered, Jesus is on the cross. Yes, that's what I came up with too. That's Jesus funny. on the cross. Yes. Lord, they know not which they do. Yep. Forgive them. They know, not, oh. no, they know not what they do. And then he died. Mm. Stephen, last words. They know not what they do, and then he mm. died. Jesus, they know not what they do. We have been given those words from Jesus so that we can have our moment on Damascus, mm. so that our hearts can be postured the way Paul's were to bring him into the presence of Jesus, yes. to be able to write a book like this that is now altering our lives. Yes. But let me just take it one step further. No, why not? Paul is on his deathbed. That's right. He waited to the very last chapter. I'm in my bedroom last night going, Whoa, Come on. What? I know. He waited to the very last chapter. Oh, his last words mm -hmm. to Timothy. Because he Come knows that Come that's on. what Timothy's going to need. Gosh. And he says to Timothy, Everyone abandon me. Jesus on the cross, everyone deserted me. Everyone abandoned me. Stephen, everyone left me. I'm the only one that's being stoned here. I had a group of friends and they all left. Everyone left me. But may it not be counted against them. And Paul, in his final words, leans in really close because he knows he's got to come full circle. Mm. Timothy, may it not mm. be counted against them. Mm. Isn't, isn't the word precious? Uh, isn't it exciting? Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it attractive? When I tell you that this woman is what brought the sexy back to Bible, it made it so attractive. The type of sexy I'm talking it's about, attractive. It's like it's attractive. It's a, it's, it is, and it's, you know what, it, it's, it is, my hands are freezing. You are free. I, I don't know what you are So cold. It but is it's, cold. it is truly like putting pieces to a puzzle when we can just rest this, you've taught me this, to like just rest in one scripture and then take the, oh, this fits here, and then this fits here, and then and then there's that like Come on. And there's that moment where you literally yes. somebody was saying yesterday as you were talking, they're like, I like hit my table and I yes. fell off the table. I was so excited. I had that moment yesterday when yes. he was like, and then I'm gonna put this piece yeah. here, and I'm gonna put this piece here. Um, oh, but mighty, I mighty. but before I close that, I just I I want to confirm the fact that could it be that the true ministry that God has called us into, and this is really hard. This is very personal for me. Because it's so hard to forgive. We're not talking about reconciliation. We're talking forgiveness. Which means it's a one-way street in this point. It means... Forgiveness does not have anything to do with the other person in the very first nothing. step. Nothing. It has all to do with 
setting this prisoner that's free. Right. That, that's it. To free that's to live out the about. purpose and the calling that God has predestined on my life. Because when you don't forgive, you literally walk around chained. Yes. Like if you picture chains around you and there's people on all these yes. chains, you carry these chains and these people every place you go, every room you go, every state you yes. go visit. These yes. people are just chained around you. And when God gives you the ability only through him yes. to cut that chain, girl, you are free mm, it doesn't make them right. it doesn't we talked about this the judging part we talked about that mm -hmm. but um it gives us some freedom but could it be this is where my heart sat yesterday mm -hmm. real quick could it be that the ministry that we in this western culture have made ministry of being you know behind a podium mm -hmm. uh with a microphone in our hand with a a, a big congregation or, or a big bible study or whatever it might be could it be that the real ministry of our life is forgiveness? Hmm. Could it be that that's what God's calling for us to be? Because I think we have a lot of us mm -hmm. who are out preaching the word really well and we're out worshiping with our hands up in the air. But, but when it comes to forgiveness, can't, not, can't hmm. do that. Can't do that. And had Stephen not given that undeserved, crazy, make no mm -hmm. sense, ridiculous, Ridiculous, straight up forgiveness to Paul. Paul would not be here. I believe that he would not yeah. be here writing all, almost all the New Testament, Agreed. 13, 14 wow. books of the New Testament. But because somebody gave him an undeserved grace and undeserved forgiveness, it radically altered his life. That's true ministry. And then he had that moment on Damascus. Jesus, why do you think his last words to us? Mm. Because he knew this truth. He knew the true ministry was mm -hmm. forgiving people when it makes no sense sense mm. and and it can't be done on a human level it can only be done oh, through the know. strength of the holy spirit that connectedness i dare not not have that connection with my god he will take us through it all even the power of forgiveness mm. which is a real power yes. that comes from his source Yes, it comes from his source. Mm -hmm. And that's why Romans tells us that we are drawn to repentance wow. by kindness. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorite verses. I think it's in Romans 2 something, mm -hmm. 214 maybe. We're drawn to repentance by his kindness, mm -hmm. not by his wrath, not by, you know, not by his great ministry, not by, by Jesus's kindness. Not by our by understanding, our not by our knowledge. Mm -hmm. Kindness. Kindness. Undeserved, mm -hmm. unmerited mm -hmm. um, kindness. Um, yeah. And then that, that becomes the ripple effect. Oh, my heavens. Well, yes. I don't think I said it out loud to you. Ooh. I don't, because I don't study it at night. So I yeah. don't know if you just knew what, because I did get all that this morning. You didn't say it I didn't get me. all of the acts, but mm -hmm. I got, of course, it's not that, you know, amazing. Yes, of course, we're both reading the same scripture, but I too, uh -huh. look at my visualizations oh, here. I love your visual, um, visualizations. I, my visualizations reverberations I um of course you know um I I got a personal connection and mm. when I read the first time I was brought before the judge no one was with me mm. um I'm like a little nervous right now because I don't want to make this about me because that's something I got to get over is like the enemy says oh Tara here you go making it about you again and, and Jesus right now is saying, girl, it tired. is not about you. Mm -hmm. It is about the God in you mm -hmm. and everything that Joy had said. But there are times that when I see the word judge, he reminds me of standing before the judge yeah. um, after my home invasion. And I've had to stand before real judges before. Yep. And the visualization he gave me was I just had this picture of a, a little person. And then I'm like, God, what am I visualizing? And it's like a little girl. It's like a little childlike. And then being looking up at the judge mm -hmm. in this huge desk, right? The big judge's desk. Mm -hmm. And then the judge is, you know, way high. And so I just drew a little stick figure picture and um, thinking about, and so again, this is just a personal visualization that I did in, in some journaling. And, um, and then the other stuff I'm not going to talk about because Joy had already mentioned some of it. So I'll just go where the Spirit's leading me. So the first time I was brought before the judge, no one was with me. So I pictured that and then literally drew this little stick figure of, of being alone facing a judge. And not because I was being judged. After my home invasion, I had to testify 
what really happened. Mm -hmm. And I had to stand up there by myself and mm -hmm. my, the person for the very first time that I had to see. So the very first time, it was, I mean, I really felt alone, and I had to verbalize what happened to me. And that was within a month or so of it happening. So the judge is just way big up on this stand. Then there's little old me, and I felt really little, super afraid, like my heart is pounding just thinking about it again. And then there's the man who broke into the home. Mm. And I really did feel alone and I'm facing the judge. And so the very first visual that God gave me this morning was me being so little in comparison to the situation. And that, mm. and then I'm like, what do you want me to know about this? Because I know the story. I know. I, what else? What else do you want me to know? I want to get past this. He goes, I don't want you to get past this. I want you to remember this memory again. And so he, he just reminded me of how truly, and this is where Paul is. And that this is where I was because of what Joy just said. Like, I was a baby Christian. I didn't even know what I know today. I wasn't immersed in the word, but yet it was in me. God is in me. God is in the pre-Christians. God made me. And he just wants us to have this understanding and this connectedness with him from our head to our heart. My story is that I got it in my heart and I didn't have it in my head yet. I didn't have the church and the Bible knowledge, but I had it in my heart. So here I am having it in my heart, coming before the judge, which is not the judge, but a judge mm -hmm. like Paul and how nervous Paul must have felt mm -hmm. to be alone. Mm -hmm. And then to think everyone else left. And I got to tell you, and I don't know if my family will ever really listen to this, but none of my family, and I don't mean none, like who lived far, mm -hmm. but I didn't have a mom there with me. I didn't have a dad there with me. I had my husband. And, um, but I was alone. I mean, I had this idea of the security that I wanted and in a human sense, how I felt so alone, but I really, 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 really was not alone. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I had the God, the same God that was in my home that saved me was the same God that was there with my, with the human judge. Mm -hmm. And I'm literally looking at this perpetrator, this man who terrified me, my biggest nightmare come true. Mm -hmm. And I am alone. My heart is pounding. I felt alone. So I've got this God in me. And God said, I really want you, and listen to this, because this is what we do for people if we have a chance to meet with people one-on-one. -on -one. But it's this right now, just imagine yourself alone in that very situation that happened. Mm -hmm. And then allow yourself to say, Jesus, where were you mm -hmm. in this situation? And let him show you. Mm -hmm. Even though I already went through this healing, God wanted me to do this today again. Where were you? And then all of a sudden, I had this defense team. And so I drew it. And I didn't draw, draw. Good luck, Lori. Um, but in my journal, I just drew a humongous G for God. He was there with me. J for Jesus. He was there with me. HS, Holy Spirit, you were there with me. So what seems so tiny, me defending myself and explaining the terror and the horror of this man coming into my home because the, everyone else thought that he was just there to get my TV. He was just breaking and entering, which meant slap on the hand. And I had to use my shaking words to say the terror that he put on our family. I'm not done with the story yet, but I had to go before the judge to explain this. And boy, did I feel alone. And then when I allowed Jesus into the situation, mm -hmm. he showed me how big he is in the spiritual realm that maybe we can't see with our eyes, but he is so present. And he carried mm -hmm. me through this. And he said, you are not alone. And it, he didn't, I gotta be honest with y'all, I've healed from this. This isn't for me. This is for you right now. Mm -hmm. This is for you to say this thing that you feel so alone, that you are explaining the situation. You have friends that have rebuked you. You have family that have left you. You have these people, these coworkers who, who have abandoned you. And then there's a whole other side to this as to why they did. Mm -hmm. Because I'll get there. So then, and just allow yourself to say, Jesus, through all of that abandonment, where were you? And let him show you where he was. Oh, that's so good. Let him show you. Let him reveal it. Let that healing begin. Mm -hmm. 
And so he did. And he said, I, girl, mm -mm, you're never alone. There is a defense team. There is always a power of four. You think you're by yourself in any situation? Forget being before a judge. Any situation, there are four of you. There's always a team around you. God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Always. I have to say something. Yes, ma'am. Because it is overwhelming me right now. Mm. This, this, is, this is an amazing story. Mm. Because when we, oh my gosh. Do you know that day I was there? Do you know that day there were a couple of very dear friends of yours that were there? But in that moment, the, what the enemy tries to do is to tell you that you're all alone. Right. And God comes in, and your time now of looking back on that day, because I remember you reading those words. I remember. You were at court with me? Girl, I was. I, I was God. there! <laughs> I was there! I watched I you. I literally forgot that you were oh, at court with me. Girl, I was there! I literally don't have that. But memory. not just me. I was there with another girlfriend of yours that we, we would not leave your side. <gasps> yes, I was there. I watched all this. Look at the skew. This memory. is why I'm like, okay. Are you she, kidding me right now? I did not remember who was. I able saw to come. his face. I watched you read that letter to him. I saw you give him that Bible. I saw you forgive him. I saw you trembling. I saw those tears as you read what he did to you or tried to do to you. Yes. I was there. But listen, I'm not saying it's about me. No, 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 no. This girlfriend. is so good. This is so good. Because what the enemy tries to tell us when we're all alone, there's nobody, oh. there's nobody here for me. That God comes in and goes, oh, no, 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 no. I didn't want you to see all those other people because they're only humans. I couldn't give you, Tara, what you needed in that moment. God wanted to show up and be the big G, to be the big J, to be the big HS. I wasn't supposed to be that for you. Your girlfriend that was a teacher with you, she wasn't supposed to be that for you that day. Your husband, Ryan, he wasn't supposed to be that for you. Okay, I don't want to cry. Girl. What? I forgot. This is what, this is real life. As you're telling the story, my heart's like, Lord, you are so amazing. <laughs> oh that we think we're all alone and it's like we can be surrounded by people and yet still feel so alone. And God's like, that's Isn't because that the truth? I wanted you to see just me. Just Because I was so stinking scared, focusing on being in the being before the judge, alone, defending myself, and I forgot y'all were right there. I know that's he not what you're talking about, but to, yes. it was supposed to be that way. Because mm. he wanted to be the only one. Wow. And I think that's relatable to your life right now, too. Wow. Okay, can, can the, I add on real yeah. quick? Real quick, real quick. Yeah, real yeah, quick. yeah, yeah. Listen. Listen up. This is real, real this life. Is real okay, life. I'm still stunned. <laughs> so, okay. Um, but here's the thing. What she said is what I said in this situation through scripture that at this time I didn't even know scripture. But here's what then I said. I had a belief that he was there. Yep. From the moment of the home invasion, I knew God was present. Yep. Why am I a Christian? Why am I who I am today is because of this home invasion. Yep. Because God was present in my biggest fear. Yep. He's like, I got to rid you of this fear. I got to bring it to you to help you walk through it. And I'm going to show you my power while in it. And yep. then... I'm going to be, show you the power of, the, of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. And then you're going to stand before a judge. And you're going to have people with you. And you're probably going to forget, apparently. And then, so there's this belief system. I always ask when I read about characters in the Bible, people in the Bible. I say, what, are, what must they believe about God? And I'm telling you, I am not boasting in Tara. I am boasting in the power of God. In my biggest nightmare, I had a belief system that God was that big, so big that even if I felt alone, I was never alone on that judge's chamber. Okay. So then, then the power of forgiveness was allowed to be let in. Ooh, and this is then. when God said to me, buy him a Bible, not Tara, because mm -mm, in my own will, I wanted to find him. I had a whole, whole army, mostly a hubby, who wanted to find him and knock his door down and terrorize him and use everything in my will and power. Nope. God said, it's not about you. I need you to, through you, through the situation, I need him to know me. Fast forward, bought him a Bible, highlighted everything about the power and the love and the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. I highlight. I didn't even know where these things were. I just went through the Bible and I highlighted. I wish I 
took pictures like I do today because I can't it's even in remember. Your, it's in your heart. And That's then I gave most. it to him. I gave it to the, bo- the young adult. He's in his early 20s. And I gave him a Bible. And the judge said, this has never happened before. I don't ever let anyone meet the perpetrator. This type of stuff. To- I'm like, yeah, I know because Jesus wanted this to happen. And so I not only forgave him, even though I was still in post-traumatic stress and seriously terrified and, you know, clenching close and living in her basement. But I bought him a Bible because I obeyed the love of Jesus. That's the law, number one law I obey, the law of love. And I loved him even though I wanted to punch him in the face. I gave him the Bible. I um, forgave him in a spiritual, real level so that, which is now the scripture today, could it be? Could it be? I don't know the answer. Oh, I think we do. Could it be? that this man who has his own issues, the reason that he was showing up in life in his way as an addict and as a terrorizer because he came to terrorize and hurt me, he told me, Mm -hmm. um, could it be that to this day he too and the little daughter that he had Mm -hmm. with his girlfriend, could it be that they are set free? Could it be that generational sins, I don't know. Oh, I do know. I think that you Mm -hmm. set in Pastor's heart to be aligned for his own road to Damascus moment and not just for him, but for his children. Because you could have went on, you could have still been the great Christian and still held that, held that grudge. I'm not going to forgive him. I'm not going to let, I'm not going to mm. let go of that. Uh, but you chose the most active, potent ingredient of forgiveness that that is the only thing that could have postured mm. and unlocked his heart to receive the generational, maybe his entire generational line of knowing Jesus Christ. Because we're not saying just maybe, because we see it scripturally. We see it with Jesus himself. We see it with Paul. We see it with Timothy. Go all the way to the back of the Old Testament. We see it with Joseph. Forgiveness is a key. Forgiveness is mandated by God because he knows that he alone has the strength and your weakness to give you that ability to do it. We can't do it on our own. It can only be mandated through his hand. Um, but it's a, I mean, you are a walking example of a Timothy. You are a walking example of a Stephen uh, of, and of a Paul and a, of Joseph from the Old Testament. What you did was not of you. Mm-mm. And that's the greatest ministry. I think if we focused our ministry work more on, you know, instead of on podiums and stages, I think if we focused our ministry work more on forgiveness, mm-hmm. I think this world would change. Amen. I think, I think that's wow. the, I truly believe that that is the Amen. key ingredient because it is one of the most difficult things. But, but real quick, just, just hear me on this. Uh, like we talked about yesterday, maybe you weren't here yesterday. Uh, this girl right here, she's never going to give that young man a key to her house. Yes. Right. So she right. forgave him, but you're, I'm not letting you back into my life. I'm not letting right. you back into my home, right. but I'm going to free you of so good. and free me. I'm going to free you to be all that God has designed you to be by giving you the ingredient of forgiveness. Mm-hmm. You loved him to be the man that God designed him to be while he was in his mother's womb. In order to Amen. be that, in order to have the Damascus moment, he had to see crazy, relentless, ridiculous, make no sense forgiveness up close and personal. Amen. And I had to have my Damascus moment. And I had to get over the spirit of fear yeah. and God allowed, he allowed, don't tell me he didn't. I love you all, but I have people tell me, don't tell you that God allowed it. He sure did. Because well, he's sovereign. He, he allowed to. it yep. to show me that fear doesn't have a power over me, that his power of love and healing, he needed to br- allow it in, allow the greatest nightmare in to set me free while showing me how mighty he is. He was bigger than the power of my nightmare coming true, the home invasion. I hope those words were in slow motion and extra loud today because they were right now. I know I get up close and personal and I get to hear it really loud, but really, I really pray that what she just said, that her greatest nightmare that became a reality was the very doorway that led her into life in abundance, the life of freedom for not only her life, but everybody she does life with and the legacy that you're leaving and the generational line behind you. Um, Mm. through her greatest nightmare. So if you're in a if you're in your if you're in a nightmare right now, these words are for you. These are not just for Tara. It's Tara, so that that's her story. They're your story. 
your greatest nightmare, my mm. greatest nightmare, mine as well. Mm -hmm. It's oftentimes our greatest messes that become our greatest messages. Mm -hmm. It's oftentimes our greatest tests that become our testimony. I know that's cheesy and it's overly used, but girl, it is it's, so right on. Yep. It's so mm -hmm. right on. There's a couple, I want to share this real quick. Some of these quotes I found on forgiveness because I'm a quote person and I have them all over my home. I love it. But um, I thought some of these were really freeing. True forgiveness is when you can say, thank you for that experience. Ooh. True forgiveness is when you can have a house intruder that wanted to do the worst of the worst and you can say to him in, in the courtroom, yeah. thank you for that experience mm -hmm. because I got to encounter Jesus in a mm -hmm. way I never would have encountered him before because I got to know love in a way I never I never had, had received it before. It's Another true. one is um, holding a grudge doesn't make you strong. It makes you bitter. Mm -hmm. But forgiving and forgiving doesn't make you weak. It sets you free. That's what we've been saying. And then my favorite, I've said this before, but my favorite, Joyce Meyer, she says this, unforgiveness in the heart of believers is the single biggest open door for the devil. Mm -hmm. Mama Joyce right there. Whoa. Mama Joyce preaches it, unforgiveness. Wow. Yeah, holding a grudge. So that's what I, and we're coming to a close, but yeah. that's what I was thinking when I was studying. I had the experience, I know, but I was really going back to Paul and what he must have been feeling. I explained that. And then the, the idea that everyone abandoned me and I hope it all will, won't be held against them. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I loved that, like same thing, example, that I, I, don't, I really don't want it to be held against them, mm -hmm. this man. Um, and it sets both of us free. Yeah. But I also, for a moment, appreciated all the different perspectives that are out there as to why these people abandon him. And the reality of this time is that you were murdered. You were crucified, like you were um, imprisoned. They literally feared their life. Yeah. So the abandonment, when we first read it, we might be reading it from Mm-hmm. I was abandoned. Too. Yep. I, this happened to yeah. me too. And, and we can read it, but like really think about this time period. And today, even when God asks us to do something mm -hmm. and we can't understand. And when you and I were talking about, um, Jonah, Jonah and the whale, the very popular children's Bible story that everyone can, you know, wrap their mind around to a certain extent, but really think about that Jonah was asked by God, hmm. just like these people were asked. Paul was asked. He was commissioned. Timothy was commissioned by God. Some of these different, and I'm referring to the scriptures like within the last two weeks in chapter four, where we're talking about men and women, well, men who left for a certain reason to continue on with ministry. So that was a certain type of a feeling of an abandonment. And some left because they were scared to death, literally scared to death. And so really appreciating, and so God brought me to Jonah, and it's like, oh, he, was, he wasn't listening, and so he um, got knocked off the boat, and then he went into this little whale for however many days, and that's what happens when you don't listen. Uh -uh, listen now. Hmm. Jonah was asked to go to Nineveh. Look up Nineveh. It ain't a nice place. It's not Hawaii. It's not some paradise. You just get to relax and go, you know, be a Christ follower. Mm -mm. This was Nineveh. Oh, it was Las Vegas on steroids with a twisted, skewed, perverted darkness that Amen. Las Vegas doesn't even It was touch. awful. Mm -hmm. It was awful. Mm -hmm. And he's telling little Jonah, yeah, I need you. And by the way, you're going to say something that they don't even understand that's going to happen to them. You need to be the one alone to go preach this message, sweet little prophet of mine. And he's like scared to death. Mm -hmm. I want to just take, I just wanted to take a little bit here at the end to really appreciate even this man that broke into my home. God allowed me to see him through his eyes. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to. Are you kidding he was a scum of the earth, according to my book, but no, he is a child of God. He was made by God, and God was saying, Tara, I'm asking you to love him the way I love him, because he has no father, check. He has, you know, little education. He's addicted to this. He's, he's uh, hanging around with these people. He's, he's got anger issues, he's, but I will set him free. I need you to be the person to spread this message. 
I did that one. That one, that one was easier than when God told me to quit my job. That was terrifying to me. Let's just for a minute understand the true meaning behind God being in, in Luke saying, uh, excuse me, Jesus hanging on the cross saying, forgive them. They, not, they don't know what they're doing in so many words. We sometimes have that judgment. We're the judge. Real mm -hmm. quick though, Please. hurt people hurt people. Yes. So could it possibly, as you're talking, I'm like, wait a minute. If hurt people hurt people, which is why that person has hurt you, wounded you, betrayed you, rejected you, left you, abandoned you, yeah. um, because of their own hurt, could it be that loved people love people? And could it be that forgiven people forgive? Yes. And you gave him that ingredient. Paul is giving Timothy that ingredient. Jesus gave us that ingredient. He gave Stephen us gave that ingredient. The, Stephen gave that ingredient to Paul. Mm. Uh, we read it through all the prophets in the Old Testament. The same. That's the belief system. Did Jesus first forgive us? Mm -hmm. If we can't, if we have to wrap our brain around how chosen and how loved and how forgiven our sin is. Mm -hmm. Yup, that thing, mm -hmm. and that thing, 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 and that thing. Mm -hmm. it, if he first did it for us, who am, if I, who am I, who am I not to forgive? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, another thought, and then we gotta close in prayer, but another thought I'm having um, is today might be your last day, we don't know. Yeah. We don't know if we have tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So can we all just do what it is that Paul has done, that Stephen has done, that Jesus himself has done, and their last, they happen to know this was going to be their final days. We don't know it. Mm -hmm. So why not let today be the day that we say, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. Let today be that that comes out of your mouth, that pours out of your mouth, not knowing if today is your last day. Uh, I think I, I got to rewatch this. I got to watch this because this is live for us. Uh, will you please spread this word? It has nothing to do with Joy and I and has everything to do with reverberating the love of Jesus through the power of forgiveness. Let's forgive these politicians. Let's forgive our coworkers. Let's forgive our son for backing into vehicles. I didn't mean to rat him out. Sorry. Sorry, Shay. Oh, I ratted him out even <laughs> Okay, I'll buy you something big. Um, uh, let's forgive um, that comment that was said to us. Let's forgive um, the timing of, of cutting the grass. Let's forgive, let's forgive, let's forgive today. Let's, let's close this and solidify this in prayer. Heavenly mm -hmm. Father, thank you for choosing me. Thank you for making me. And when I say me, when I say I, I mean anyone who's listening to this at this moment, my voice is a unified voice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for forgiving me, Jesus Christ. Thank you for what you did for me. May I never, ever forget. And if I don't understand, may I learn about your story. And maybe it's through this Bible study, verse by verse by verse. Maybe it's by watching um, and studying more about what you did, um, Passion of the Christ. But we have to know like we know like we know that we are chosen, that we are loved, and that we were forgiven. All of this happened while we were in our mother's womb. We were created, we were known, we were seen. Let's believe it today like we've never believed it before. Today, right now, is a whole new day. So that we can show up in the world as forgiven, who then can forgive, as loved, who then can love, as seen so that we can see the way you see people that you bring in our path. It is not an accident. There are no coincidences. Thank you for this right order, um, life, legacy that you've promised us, Jesus, this abundant life. Thank you. We pray all of this, this hour, and the rest of this day, as you give us breath in our lungs, we pray all of this in your mighty name. Jesus Christ, amen. Amen.
Thank you, Tara. Thank you. Thank you all for being with us today. And what a beautiful day. I love looking it's out these really windows beautiful. in it. There's actually Here sun today. Yeah. It's gorgeous. So, oh, and by the way, thank you for being with me, even though I forgot that you were with me. I don't take it personal because I know that I know. Jesus wanted to be the only one that was with you in that courtroom. Wow. I, lo I love how that just came out uh, tomorrow. So if you haven't registered yet to be with us here in person, just go over to uh, our website at barn45.org and uh, sign up because we can't wait to start our morning with you. But That's we'll be right. here online either way. See you tomorrow morning. Love you. Love you.